Okay, well, perhaps okay. You, yeah. you could start by telling me what your role yeah. here is at Benoy. Yep, yeah, okay. Um, well, I joined Benoy just over a year ago um, to help um, re-stimulate the aviation transport group within the company. So aviation is, is the prime um, motivation at the moment. Um, Benoy's have been involved in aviation for quite a few years, but like a lot of companies through COVID, the market, the business um, stopped quite um, considerably. So post COVID, they approached me to um, join the company to re-stimulate the sector, uh, essentially. So I've been involved in every aspect of, pretty much every aspect of an airport from master planning, um, cargo maintenance, control towers and terminal design. But latterly in the last 10 years or so, that focus has primarily been on the passenger journey, uh, terminal design, and within that, the important component of um, commercial provision, shops, retail, um, F&B, leisure, CIP lounges, but then also the lounges and the flow of passengers through the whole process from curbside through to aircraft and vice versa. And very much now, actually, we're looking at the passenger journey from initiation to completion and that initiation can be weeks months beforehand the day beforehand the approach to the airport and then post journey as well because the development of you know, personal technology has meant that the whole journey both processing and the commercial interaction um, spans way beyond the actual instance of the journey in, in many respects so that's essentially my role um, here currently we're working on projects um, pretty much globally, um, a couple in the States, um, uh, Asia, Middle East and the UK. Um, prime activities are probably post-Covid, um, post-Covid the, the industry is um, uh, rebounding quite strongly but it has taken um, different time scales in different, different regions. And definitely Asia and the Middle East um, respond, re recovered more quickly. Um, Northern Europe has taken a little bit more time. Um, and uh, I think it's fair to say that the commercial activities within and around airports have become very, very important, even more important um, to the model. We'll talk in a minute about the whole um, commercial side of, um, of, the, of um, the business within aviation. But the um, sort of post-COVID, um, a lot of um, companies or even sovereign funds are seeing the need to recover some of the losses that they have sustained through COVID through enhanced commercial returns. And equally, um, commercial return is becoming increasingly harder to achieve with the pressures on from um, virtual shopping um, people being more conscious about maybe where they spend, how they spend. So where aviation um, companies could generally assume a continual growth in return, possibly um, primarily on the back of growth, of growth in passengers, um, that doesn't necessarily hold so true now. So they're, they're having to work a lot harder and that involves us working a lot harder with our clients to um, protect and sustain those very necessary incomes within the, um, the airport model. And I think that's, that's something that's worth touching upon is that um, uh, some people see, are quite cynical about uh, commercial activity, retail, F&B within a airports, thinking it's just airports trying to squeeze another dollar out of um, a passenger. You could argue some respects that's true, but when you look across the business model of, from a, um, the sale of a ticket, airlines and airports, uh, the, the non-direct uh, ticket sale income, i.e. the commercial activity within a, um, an airport, supports anywhere between a quarter to a third of the overall cost of moving passenger around. 
So actually, it's an important part of that very cheap ticket you might be um, being able to buy to travel to wherever you're, you're going. So until the, the economic um, model changes, I, people are prepared to spend more on a ticket, the airlines change their model, um, an airport can't sustain itself without those um, considering those incomes and that comes from say shops, cafes, restaurants, um, also car parking, CIP lounges etc. They're, they're an important part of the mix of the, in, within the price of your ticket. So um, I say it's an important part of the, the overall business and it's, it's, it's probably a key focus for Benoit in that sense. And so you're delivering this within airport buildings uh, designed by others? Sometimes designed by others, sometimes um, designed many years, decades ago. But also, we're, we're also designing terminals ourselves. Uh, apologies. Um, we're, we're designing terminals ourselves, um, within which obviously the, the commercial and the passenger journey element is, is, a, is a key component. So frictionless travel is an interesting concept and you know, obviously using technology to smooth the passenger through the processing uh, stages of their journey from initially, initially buying a ticket to, to transport to the airport through the, air, the various airport services and beyond. But there's an important link there with commercial activity. We, we see commercial activity in an airport as not only helping support the overall business case, but to be honest, it's also an important part to the whole journey. Um, whilst I say that some passengers may be a bit, a little bit cynical, it's it's part of the experience, part of the fun. Um, people often need to eat, to relax, um, be distracted by um, commercial offers. So I don't see it as a, as a, as a barrier to um, the journey. It's actually part of the fun and the enjoyment. So that bringing that element into that frictionless um, journey concept is, is, is also in, is important. Uh, in, we in the commercial area are always looking at how we can improve the processes through an airport anyway because um, we, we want passengers to relax and be in a happy mood and that, by, by being happy and relaxed they're more likely to spend more time at the airport to relax to spend and enjoy themselves there as part of the overall experience of the journey rather than just being a facilitator to get from A to B it's, a, it's actually part of the enjoyment basically back to that the the original romantic era of uh, era of travel it and not just seeing it as a, 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 a means to an end but actually making it part of the fun so the more we can do to ease the process, uh, ease the journey through the processes such as check-in and security, the better. So the, 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 the more f we can facilitate the frictionless journey, the better really for the passenger and the better for the commercial environment. But that also requires us to interface with that virtual world. So as I said, as I said earlier, it's not just about the physical, it's also about the virtual and the virtual and the physical having to, to link up and actually um, have, a, have a common offer. And very much around that offer at the moment is about well-being, relaxation and sustainability. So it is important that we recognise that in the commercial um, environment within the airports, that, that, it, that we're hitting those right uh, value points with a passenger both in the physical and also in the virtual, because it's, it's undoubtedly a key um, value and judgment and decision factor for passengers and the public generally. And do you, do you get involved in those tricky bits of uh, checking and security and so on, which are the bits that yes. frustrate passengers yes. so much? V very much so. Um, so my background has gone, has, has gone through all of, you know, designing all of those processing elements as much as the commercial elements. So. We have an, a good understanding of, of how to design those processing elements for the benefit of the ease of the passenger. So quite often we're asked to come in and look at maybe the commercial aspect of a, a terminal reconfiguration, but find ourselves then working um, with um, the airport, actually drilling back into the processing side 
to improve those processes, the flows, um, the time a passenger might spend in those, those areas for the benefit of that whole um, holistic journey. Sometimes the commercial can be seen as separate from the processing and they're not. They're, they're, it's, it's a complete um, package really. So yes is the answer. We get involved in that as, as much as really in the commercial design as well. So when you, when you find yourself uh, uh, putting the commercial into an existing design, do you find that uh, uh, architects generally now will understand uh, the need for commercial as an essential part of the um, journey through their building? I would say the, the world's probably still split 50-50. Um, so I, I, I've, I came through learning through the processing into the commercial environments, and, but um, I think I, I perhaps have more one of more of the more enlightened and seen seen the importance. It's when when you drill down and understand the the business case of a of a client, and this, that that's the same within any sector. Is understanding when you understand the client's business, then you understand the re, the reason behind. There are still ar architects out there who do not understand the need uh, that. I outlined earlier for the commercial as part of the client's overall business case but as I say that I also think that the commercial side is important for the passenger um, as long as you're not um, you know, ramming the commercial in the face of a passenger you're making it an option and available to them uh, which is increasing the, the way we're moving in the world um, it's, as I say, it's, it's part of the overall, it can be part of the overall fun of the journey. If you look at you know, a lot of urban contexts, you know, the Ramblers in Barcelona, it, that is a, that's a commercial um, environment, but it's a fun leisure environment as well. Um, people like to relax and spend time um, in retail and F&B areas because they, 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 they can choose to shop, dwell, or just um, um, uh, take, a, take a look. Uh, so uh, what are your favourite airports and what are the ones that frustrate you most you'd like to get your hands on? Um, I think um, I have to obviously say Changi is one of my favourites. Um, it's, it's an airport that Benoit have worked at um, over the years. It's commercially, it's a very um, successful airport. It is a fun airport. Um, it has its critics um, but I think it's, it's always um, uh, fairly well respected. Um, I, I, I still have a lot of respect for um, airports such as in the UK such as Heathrow. Um, we've worked recently at Oslo, that's a, a, a particularly lovely airport, it's a particularly friendly airport, very efficient, um, um, it's nicely designed. Um, I have a certain affection for Billund just as a, as a design um, concept, very small, small airport. Hong Kong has its um, great advantages as well. I particularly like um, traveling through Hong Kong. Airports that I'd like to get my hands on. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy working, a, a, one, one of the fascinations and one of the joys of working in aviation is you get to work in different cultures. And, um, you get to, particularly on the smaller airports, you get to understand if you're doing, I think if you're doing your job properly, the context of the airport, the community it sits within, the, the national context, the local context, um, the political, it's, it's political context, it's um, economic context. Um, so you get to learn a lot about um, different regions, different nationalities, different religions. So I particularly like working on small um, airports, small island airports are one of um, my great joys is that you get to understand a little microcosm of how people live and how uh, the airport functions within its context. Um, over the years where, when I've worked at Jersey for example, it's a small island airport, it is part business, part tourist, part um, essentially bus service for the islanders. Um, so it has, a, it has a very unique quality compared with maybe a, a large hub airport. So um, any, any island airports out there who 
are keen to look at what they've got. That's that would be um, a play, you know, sort of a sector, a subsector which I'm particularly um, fond of. And so, what what do you say to people who say uh, flying is so unsustainable? What are you doing working in that sector? Um, the, the flying part, there's no question about it. There is an issue there that um, has to be faced up to. Um, I'm not a legislator. Um, I'm not. Um, I don't badger people to fly. I don't um, pr pr particularly promote flying. For I would say the last 25 to 30 years, I've done everything I can in the various sectors I've worked in through um, industrial, residential, and aviation to ensure that all the projects I'm involved in are, are sustainable and achieve the most sustainable credentials possible. I can do a lot of what to the, the stuff that sits on the ground. I can influence certain aspects of what happens on the ground, taxi times, etc. I can't directly um, influence the aircraft at this stage. So I think what, I, what I'm trying to say is that um, I believe as a designer I do what I can in terms of the sustainability of the infrastructure. People still choose to fly and I'm also a believer in, in a global community and not a, um, an isolated um, islands, uh, community of I or world of um, separate communities. And I, I, I genuinely believe that to solve the climate crisis, it has to be a global um, initiative rather than just people isolating themselves and um, withdrawing. So in that sense, I think the communication um, is important. I completely accept that some people's views, uh, choices not to fly, or to fly, I'm just doing what I can within the area that I can influence, whether it's a direct aviation project or any other project I'm involved in that they take, I, I give it the, the highest sustainable consideration I, po I possibly can. And, you know, it's, it's ultimately it comes down to personal choices. I think, um, you know, uh, I, I, you know um, I think there's also a difference perhaps in consideration for people to consider whether they choose to, to fly long haul or short haul. There are different um, carbon issues with, within those. But as I say, I do everything that I can to make, it, make airports, that part of it, as sustainable as possible. Thank you very much. Okay.